Hi, welcome back to Statistics One. We're in Lecture 8, Segment 3. In the last segment, I covered just a basic overview or tutorial of matrix algebra. And the reason we did that is so that we could see exactly how the regression coefficients are estimated in a multiple regression. So how is it that these multiple coefficients are estimated all at once? And to really see that in action, you need to understand how the matrix algebra works. So now that we've had that basic tutorial in matrix algebra, let's run through an example. So the main topic of this, se this segment is just, again, estimation of regression coefficients in multiple regression. We're still doing ordinary least squares regression, just like we did in simple regression. Um, but now we'll be using matrix algebra to calculate the coefficients. So again, the values of the coefficients are estimated such that the model comes up with optimal predictions. Again, we want to minimize the residuals. So we want to minimize the difference between the observed scores on Y and the predicted scores on Y predicted by the model. So again, minimize sums of squares residuals, just like in simple regression. So again, here's the simple regression equation. We get our predicted score on Y. It's a function of the regression constant plus uh, some predictor times its slope. And of course the difference is the prediction error or residual. Now let's put that in matrix form. Another thing I did here is I standardized everything just to make this a, a little easier on us. So the regression constant goes away. We can assume that's zero. But now think of all of these y, b, and x as matrices. Well, actually you can think of some of them as just vectors <laughs> uh, for now. Um, so y is just an n by one column vector, right? So uh, there's just however many people we have in our study or however many cases, that's how many predicted scores we have. We're just dealing with one outcome variable. The betas, uh, they're just a k by one vector. So for each predictor, we're going to have one beta, or one regression coefficient. And then x is going to be a matrix, and it's an n by k matrix. So again, the rows correspond to individual subjects or cases, and the columns correspond to individual predictors. Now using matrix algebra, we can estimate these regression coefficients in the beta matrix all at once. So let's see how that works. So to solve for B, first replace the predicted scores with the observed scores. And then remember that to do matrix multiplication, the two matrices have to be conformable, meaning that the columns in the first matrix have to, the number of columns in the first matrix has to equal the number of rows in the second matrix. So we have to flip X and B around there uh, so it becomes y equals xb. So here we are. Again, these, these are matrices. Now we want to solve for b. Right? So this, this is just basic algebra, and the only trick is that you're looking at matrices instead of scalars. So nothing too scary here. Uh, so we just want to solve for b. The way to get rid of x uh, is we need to make it square and symmetric. So the way to do that is just to pre-multiply by its transpose. And that's what x prime equals. So our formula, y equals xb, again, this is just basic algebra. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do the other. So we pre-multiply the left side by the transpose of x, pre-multiply the right side by the transpose of x. Now, to solve for b, all we have to do is eliminate x transpose x. That's actually pretty easy because we can pre-multiply by its inverse. Now that it's square and symmetric, it has an inverse. And remember that multiplying a matrix by its inverse gives you the identity matrix, which is like one. So in scalars, again, the example I used in the last segment is like multiplying two times one over two, its inverse gives you one. Right? So it, it eliminates that term from that side of the equation. So 
x transpose times y uh, equals x transpose times xb becomes this longer formula. Um, but again, note that we can just wipe out uh, everything on the right side of the equation. Uh, and the identity, identity matrix times another matrix just returns that matrix. So I times B equals B. So now we've isolated B, and that's what we wanted, right? So B, on the next slide, B is just X transpose times X, the inverse of that, times X transpose times Y. I know that's not incredibly intuitive, <laughs> and it shouldn't be. Um, but the point is, you can see in action, you can do this by hand if you had to, if you lost all electricity and there, there's no internet and no R software. Um, you could do a multiple regression analysis by hand. It would be really tedious, uh, but you could do it now. So let's actually walk through an example. In the last segment, I used some just fake data, it was really simple, um, to demonstrate matrix algebra, but remember at the end we arrived at a correlation matrix. So let's use those data to calculate regression coefficients, because much of the work is already done for us. So again, from the last segment, this was the example I was dealing with, um, and the notation's a little quirky, um, forgive me for that. Um, I did this because this would just save us some time in this segment uh, because, as I said, a lot of the work was done for us in the previous segment. But imagine we have this raw data matrix. You can think of this uh, as a data frame in R where the rows represent cases or individual subjects and the columns represent their scores on some variable. So, you know, these might be scores on like a Likert scale, so we might be looking at people's attitudes about something. Uh, and now let's assume that the first column is the outcome. So we're going to call that Y. And the second column is X1, and the third column is X2. Okay? I've called it all X uh, because they're raw scores. Uh, but you'll see when we get to the, to the regression coefficients, we need to make one of them the outcome. Right? So I just, I just picked the first column arbitrarily. We went through this in the last segment. We went through how to go from that raw data matrix to a correlation matrix. But on the way, we got to this really important matrix here. And I think I pointed this out um, when we went through this segment. I, to me, I remember this as a graduate student. Uh, I remember this exactly. Um, this calculation because I just thought, wow, this is really cool. This is where sort of matrix algebra really reveals how important it is uh, to statistics. Uh, because when we take this matrix of deviation scores, remember what happens. If you just multiply it or pre-multiply it by its transpose, like we did in the last segment, it gives you the sum to squares and the cross products. Right? So this product, it represents the sum of squares, those are in the diagonals, and the sum of cross products are in the off diagonals. But remember, now I'm saying that the first column, we're going to call that y, we're going to say that's the outcome. So really what I have is y and x1 and x2. Okay, that's going to be important as we uh, estimate the coefficients. So we have the sum to squares and we have the cross products. Since we have all of this in deviation form, as I said, we, the work is done for us. Let's take that equation for, the, for, for B, for the matrix B. Uh, since we use the deviation scores, we can just put in sum to squares x for x transpose x, and we can put in the cross products for x transpose y. Uh, it would take us some time for me to walk you through the proof of that, but, so just trust me for now. If you want to walk through the matrix algebra, if you're really into matrix algebra, you can do it. Uh, but it's a quick substitution, and it saves us some time. 
So now the formula becomes this simple calculation down here in the bottom. I've rewritten it here at the top of this slide. So what I'm doing is just taking the, the x variables. So again, this is the little, the slight of hand from the last segment to this segment. What I'm saying by taking the x variables, I'm saying let's take that part of this matrix. Because remember, I just, I designated the first column to be y. So second, third column are x1 and x2. So this is the sums of squares for x1, this is the sums of squares for x2, and that's the sum of cross products for the two predictors x1, x2. So if we just take the sums of squares and cross products for the x variables, that's just a two by two matrix because we just have two predictors. We have to take the inverse of that, and that's a little bit tedious mathematically. Uh, but again, I'm just sort of glossing over that part because I don't want to take up the time. But again, we could walk through this and, and do all the math. Um, we then post multiply that by the cross products. So there's only two cross products because we just have two predictors and one outcome. Negative two and six. Where did they come from? Again, let's go back to this nifty calculation here. There's the negative two and six. If you prefer to look below the diagonal, if you're a pessimist, um, <laughs> uh, negative two and negative 0.6. Uh, those are the cross products relating the predictors x1, x2 to y. So if we carry out this calculation, and again, I've spared you the details of inverting a matrix because it's actually a bit tedious. Um, but if you wanted to walk through all the calculations, you would get this final result. What are these numbers? What does this mean? Those are the regression coefficients for this example. So this is the slope relating x1 to y. This is the slope relating x2 to y. So clearly x2 is not related to y. The slope's almost zero. Now, I wanted to be sure I did this right um, because there was a lot of hand calculations. So I just plugged those values into R, ran a simple regression using the LM function, and sure enough, it checked out. So here's the output from R. Uh, you can see I did a, the LM function for linear model. Uh, I called it just demo, because I'm demoing matrix algebra, and I just used Y, X1, and X2. <clears throat> and what you see right here in the coefficients, that's what I wanted to see, is for x1, uh, negative 0.188, or if we round, negative 0.19. And that's what we got with the hand calculation. And if you look for x2, basically nothing going on, almost zero. We could round it to negative 0.01, which is what we got in the hand calculation. So plugged it into R, checked it out, the hand calculations worked. Again, if you want to step through this inverse calculation, uh, it's just a little tedious. It requires getting the, de the determinant of the matrix. Uh, we did that in the last segment. Uh, and then doing a few more calculations. <clears throat> and that full calculation will be available on the website. Uh, but for the sake of time, I didn't want to go through that here. Uh, but there it is. We did the calculation of regression coefficients in a multiple regression using matrix algebra. And last week, you didn't even know matrix algebra. So that's pretty impressive. <laughs>